We here at Mind Management have been working globally for decades now. We've been finding psychically attuned agents to divert global crisis for as long as we can remember, and our job is to find more of you out there. If you are a psychically powered individual and you want to help save the world, please join our cause. We'll be scouring cities globally every day until we have enough agents to help our cause. Unfortunately, there are a bunch of rogue agents currently attempting to stop us, thinking that they know what's best for society, and in so doing, they're trying to find our main recruiter, and if they can find him, they're going to devastate us. Luckily for us, we remain hidden in the shadows, and we wait to recruit you into this game of mind management. <laughs> Mind management is a game of social espionage, attempting to find the mind management team as rebels, or if you're mind management, att attempting to divert from being found and recruit as many people as possible to your cause as you uh, help save the world. Uh, it is a two to five player game. It takes about 60 minutes to play, and it is a hidden movement game by Jay Cormier and Sen Fu Lim. It is a game where you're going to be basically playing kind of like Fury of Dracula and uh, Spectre Ops, those kind of things, letters from Whitechapel, where you're moving your agents secretly around, attempting to gather new recruits for your mind management team, while the rebel agents are attempting to move around the board in search of you. This game comes equipped with a ton of different variables there's a training style mission there is the main game so you can kind of mix and match how you want to play the game and it kind of pushes into new dynamics as you add new aspects to the game changing the game ever so slightly but adding a little bit more tension the game is an intense seriously mental driven game where you're trying to figure out where that mind management team member is all while attempting to be hidden as the mind management player if you can succeed by capturing the mind management rebel or the main dude looking to recruit people, or on the other side, attempting to capture a certain amount of the inform of the people that you're trying to recruit into your team, you'll win the game. I'll go and show you down below what the game looks like, what it comes with, then we'll talk about the setup. After that, we'll go into a little bit of how to play the basic mode. We'll come up, discuss the review, talk about some of the modules, and then I'll tell you what I think about it. And then you can go ahead and check out the Kickstarter game down below. Here we have mind management and a lot of what's included in the game. This is a prototype, however, so do be aware of that. Let's go ahead and get started with talking about what you get in the game and then a little bit of setup and then we'll come down below and like I said before, discuss how the game plays for the basic scenario. So these are the agents or the rebels that are attempting to find mind management. Mind management is a hidden character that's somewhere on the board. There'll be markers that will be used to track mind management as well as one to show where that character or that player started. There are cards here which are going to denote certain symbols which you'll use in the base aspect of the game just to determine what types of recruits the mind management will need and then additionally there's something else some other things that these cards will do as well. There are footprint markers which will let the rebels figure out where the previous movement locations of the mind management players or even where they are have been by being placed on these bo the board here. There's also these little tokens which can be used by the these guys here the rebels and they can go ahead and place these anywhere on the board they want and they'll be using these as references to determine where the bad guys may or may not have went and you'll be able to use these markers on them as well like you see on this one here to determine uh, any, any kind of clues or hints you can have. These tokens here are special tokens that will be used by mind management to move a special uh, special movement once per game, but there are variants that let them use more. And there's a ton of different little variants that are added as well as characters that can have special abilities or in the base game you're just playing a one-on-one -on -one with nothing super special, but enough to understand the game. Time counter as well as the round track, which will tell you how the game ends and who wins based on what you're playing and how many specific recruits are needed by mind management before maybe the other player captures them. This is a secret board used only by mind management as well as a shield that is also used by mind management. This will cover this board throughout the entire game and most of the things that mind management will do are gonna be on this board. 
They all have the cards here, and this is all the setup, which I'll talk about in a second. But there's a lot of reference cards, as well as specific characters that Mind Management can go ahead and choose at the start of the game, one of them, to basically give them that special hidden movement bonus, which is great because the other player won't know which one they selected, so when the hidden movement comes, they won't know if they went diagonal or if they went two spaces adjacent. They'll have to try and figure it out. It's a good ninja move that you can use. Okay, so let's talk about the setup for the game. The first thing that's going to happen is the Mind Management player is going to draw three of these cards here. And these cards all have a unique symbol on them and all of the symbols are found here on the top right hand side of the board. After they draw three of these cards here, they're going to look at the three symbols and circle all 15 of the same type of symbols on their board. So for instance, one of them is an eyeball, which then he'll circle all five eyeballs on his hidden player board, along with, of course, he's got a little trolley here, and then he's also got the garden. So there should be 15 total circled spaces on this hidden board here. Additionally, uh, uh, you're going to, just before drawing those cards and circling, you're going to just choose a space to start the game off as mind management. And it's suggested that you place your space anywhere inside the middle area, basically not on the outside edges. So you have your number one on the board, you've written that down, you draw your three cards, you circle all of those symbols, and then after that, you're going to move four more additional spaces. So mind management can move up, down, left, or right. And in this case, I just chose to go down twice, to the right once, and then up once. And after they have done that, they're going to then add the recruits they have gained. So at the very beginning of the game, as you can see, I've moved down here. There's two symbols here for three and one over there for five, which means I captured three recruits already. And in this basic scenario, I only need to capture nine, but it can change depending on the scenario. And then after that, you're going to have your other player, which is going to be the rebels or the people that are looking to cause mischief. They're going to place four of their characters on the outside of the game board. Now, if you're playing two players, every, every single character is used by the same player. If you're playing with more, each character will be used, uh, maybe in a five player game, you'll have each character used by a different player. Uh, regardless, you can play up to five and it plays the same regardless of the number of players. Set up the track based on this specific game mode. We're only playing until 14, so we've went ahead and covered these up with two of these recruits, but regardless, the game will end here. And then that's pretty much it. You're gonna go ahead and write a one and indicate where you originally were as mind management. So this is the original space before moving the total of five spaces or four spaces technically. And then you'll begin the game with a time counter, allowing the mind management player to move and then the other players to choose two units to move, which we'll go ahead and talk about that just in a second where I come down here and explain how a round or two goes. Beginning the round for mind management, I have gone ahead and positioned the board so you can see most of it, mainly this portion in here. This is probably the most important for the basic beginning of the game. The rest of up here is just the extra character here and some of the symbols you may not be able to see. Regardless though, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that the mind management player has this mind slip token where they can use a special ability from the character that they chose. So they went ahead and selected at the beginning of the game one of these ones here that will let them either move diagonally or let them move uh, horizontally two spaces. And they'll choose one at random, or not random, they'll choose one of their choice and discard the other one face down so that the rebels do not know which character they chose as they go along recruiting clients. And uh, basically that's the idea of the game is this player is attempting to go and recruit the clients hidden across the board with all the circles based on the cards that he drew. And the other player is just attempting to find the player. If you find the player, the game is over and the rebels will win. So to start the game off now, the first thing that's going to happen is the mind management player will take his or her turn, and they'll just choose to move the sixth space in the board. So I'll go ahead and write this backwards, but there we go. So they went ahead and moved this way here. Now, in general, you can only move up, down, left, or right, but when it comes to these spaces here, you can actually move diagonally on them and off of them. So that can be quite relevant throughout the game, but that's the only places on the board where you can actually move diagonally towards on or off. Then after that, so we went ahead and moved here, the mind management took its movement. Now the players will get to take their movement and two of the characters here will act. And we're gonna have, go ahead and have these guys act and I'll explain the actions for these characters here. In the base game, mind management is only going to make a step action. And in the base game here, the characters are only gonna make moves and then they'll choose to either capture, ask, or reveal. So we'll use these two characters here and this character will go ahead and move one space on the board, but they can move up to two if they wanted to. And then they're going to go ahead and do something called an ask. 
What ask means is that the mind management player will have to look at their board based on the symbol of the uh, chosen character's space. So there's right here, there's a book and there's the, uh, these, I guess, these burning poles here. So I'm going to ask about books. The mind management will look at where they had previously moved to, and then they're going to place one of their step tokens, these little steps here, onto a space that corresponds with the symbol. And in this case, it's that book here. We don't know, we don't want, well, it's going to be this book, but we're going to go ahead and put this token here, which means we are either currently there or we had been there previously at one point or another. And since we were there on the fourth step, that is where we're placing it. Now, there's no other spaces with books, but if there was, you could choose between them. However, once a step token is on a space, you're not going to place another step token on that space, regardless of whether or not a clue or an ask uh, fulfills that. So after that, they went ahead and chose that. This player can now go ahead and act, and they're gonna go ahead and move one and two spaces to talk about our next action, which is reveal. Revealing is useful if you reveal on a space that has one of these step tokens, because what that, what that does is the mind management player is gonna take this white token, and then they're going to write down the current step that this specific space was on. So in this case, it was the fourth movement, and as you can see, one, two, three, and four. So now this player, the rebel, knows the mind management is currently not on this space, they're on the sixth step, which means that they're basically two spaces away in any of these in any direction so they could be here or it could be uh here so this player has an idea that, that currently the mind management is in this area of the board not over here after each of these characters have acted you're going to go ahead and turn them down which means that they have been utilized and they won't be utilized until every character has been utilized so on the next turn for the rebels they're gonna have to use these characters over here now, that's going to trigger the end of that specific phase. We'll move on to the next one, in which the mind management player will once again move. And in this case, I think she or he is going to go ahead and move this way, diagonally, to here, which is going to give this a 7. And, additionally, at the end of this round, after the other player has acted, that means that this player, the mind management, has secured yet another initiate into the ranks of mind management, which is really good. And we'll illustrate that by using these tokens here. This player over here is then going to do their movements and whatnot. So if they they so choose, they can go one and two, and then they can go, okay, I'm going to go ahead and ask about the dogs. Then you're going to go ahead and look and say, okay, I'll go ahead and place that, meaning that, in fact, I did move there at one point or another. And then this next action, maybe one and two. And I don't have anything I can really do here, unfortunately. The only thing I could do is capture. And how capture works, the last action that we're going to talk about in this specific example, is if mind management is currently in this location, the rebels win. The game is instantly over, and you have found mind management before they were able to recruit all of their initiates. All of these characters have been used, mind management had, had went previously, so that ends this specific round, and mind management will reveal that they captured one new recruit, and the next phase of the game will begin. Mind management will move, these characters will all come up, this player will choose two characters to move, or in a more multiplayer game, maybe a five-player game, this char character A will do this, and character B will do this, so on and so forth, and this will continue to move. As each of these areas progress, new recruits are going to be added, and eventually if nine get added to the board in any way, at any time during these steps here, then mind management wins. The other way mind management will win is if this gets all of the way to here and the round ends, then mind management also will win there. And finally, the way that these characters win is they just simply walk onto the space where mind management may be and choose to capture. And if they capture that character, the game's over and that player wins. And that's the basic idea for this game. But like I said, there's a lot of modules that the game comes with and this is just the basics of it. But I wanted to give you just a good understanding of how the game functions, how it plays, and what you can do in the game. Let's come up, we'll talk about some of the modules, we'll talk about some more of the base game, and then I'll tell you what I think about it. So now you understand the basics of our endeavor here at Mind Management. Let's go ahead and get into some variants as to our process. For instance, things like Immortal might see play. Immortals are agents working for us at Mind Management that will be placed on the board in certain locations that will block certain symbols from rogue agents asking about them. 
For instance, if a rogue agent is located on a space with a bird and you want to ask about the symbol bird, you can't do it because our agents are blocking the frequency, unallowing you to be able to ask that. There are also some unique aspects for the rogue agents, like for instance, all the rogue agents can have their own unique special abilities. For instance, Bill Falls here, he can as a free action move one of our immortals one space away and it's not considered a push. Push is a new action that rogue agents can take. Pesky agents attempting to push our immortals around the board so that they can ask their pesky questions. Tripwire. Tripwire is a nasty thing that we do not like because what happens is rogue agents can place them down during their move action along the board and whenever we as the mind agency trip over them, we're going to be using these psychic tripwire tokens to state where and how we moved on the board. Luckily, we have some unique provisions, such as our, basically our distraction box. The distraction box is a token that when you ask us a question, we can take this specific token, and instead of placing it like a movement token, we can place it face down, indicating it's a space that we may or may not have moved on based on the symbol you asked. And of course, the last thing I'll talk about a little bit is allies. These things you can utilize, and they'll do certain things like, for instance, the recruiter must place step tokens on all of the spaces they have moved onto previously containing the requested feature, as opposed to just one. So the movement tokens, if you request, for instance, I don't know, the pool, and we've moved on more than one pool that do not have step tokens on them, we'll have to place all of our tokens on the pool areas that we have moved onto. Allies can be very, very irritating to deal with. Let's talk about some unique features in the game. I think this is a very unique feature of the game because basically what happens is you're replacing these down the board, trying to determine and predict where the mind management recruiter has been, where they're going, and when you use these, they stay on the board if they ever get written on by the mind management player, but if not, you can take them off and use them at your leisure. There's also additional little variants to the game that you could add as well, additional actions that will come out. You'll have allies and of course the push action, and then as the mind management player you're going to have the moving immortal action as well as immortal recruiting and there's other actions too. The game starts off as a very simplified version of a hidden movement game that we kind of discussed in the explanation when we did the walkthrough, but as you can see, it gets larger and larger as you start adding things. I strongly recommend you play the base game first because it is a different worker placement game to other worker placement games, but it has the same feel. You're basically going around the board as mind management trying to collect people to recruit them. At a certain point, you win the game if the timer runs out or if you recruit enough people, and then the rogue agents are simply trying to stop you by finding out where you are. Then when you add things like Tripwire and you add things like the new abilities that characters have or even the hidden step tokens, that will change the game in a unique way pertaining to things like now I have to watch at where I'm moving as the mind management player more than just having to deal with the rogue agents themselves. The fact that rogue agents are plentiful on the board but they can only use two of them at a time and when you use two you have to use the other two before they all refresh, they can give you a sense of urgency or a sense of less desperate actions when, for instance, both the characters that were near you have used their actions and didn't find you. Maybe you get a turn of rest and relaxation to rest and relaxation to recruit the characters needed in order for you to win the game. The game has a beautiful look to it. It has a nice, it has a stylistic feel when it feels like one of those 80s style games moving around the board, trying to collect what you need. Uh, there's some cool things with this box too. Things like uh, complete agent testing kit and activation kit. We're not paranoid, you're paranoid. A lot of these things, all of the boards say different things. This looks like an old style game, old style board game attached to all this paraphernalia or like basically reminds me kind of like the movie They Live. You must eat, sleep. The mind management are trying to be good guys, saying that they're helping the world crisis, but in reality, they're a huge corporate entity attempting to do the betterment for themselves and recruit people into their corporate greedy aspects. They're using psychological warfare on people. And so it has that negative aspect towards them. And of course, the rogue agents are doing their best to shed light on this evil corporate entity that's messing with people's minds. Overall, I really, really liked this game. I liked all the added features. I just even enjoyed the base game for what it was because it had some unique aspects to a worker, a hidden, I keep saying worker placement, a hidden movement game that I haven't yet seen. I like the fact that I also have the ability to write down all the clues and put them all down so I don't have to use as much memory. I mean, there is still memory and there's still a lot of de deduction as to where people moved and how they moved, but with tokens like these, it's gonna help you out greatly. 
game. And then for the mind management player to use that board to know where they need to go, but how to get there and when to move in certain spaces, it gets the tension right up in this game. There's a lot of tension. If you don't like games that are going to make you feel a little stressed out, I suggest this one's probably not going to be for you because there's definitely a lot of tension, a lot of stressful situations you're going to find yourself in, and both players are going to think they're on the losing end for most of the game because you're not going to know if that player knows where you are, if you're playing mind management, and as mind management, you're hoping that you can gather the specific recruits and hoping that that player has no clue what is going on. And in both players' minds, they're like, oh, oh, oh no, what is going on? Do they know where I am? They know I'm on my fifth space was here. They know I've only got one other space and it's here. Oh, good, they moved on the opposite side. Oh, okay, I have one more turn to continue to, to, to deviate from that plan. Utilizing that one special move from the mind management, which is the ability to move either diagonal two spaces or you can move the horizontal or vertical two spaces and they, they don't actually know which card you chose is a lifesaver for mid game and it comes down close to the wire every single time. Overall, I really, really enjoyed mind management. And I think you will too if you like a hidden movement style game, much like those other games hidden, uh, Letters to Whitechapel, uh, Mr. X, or uh, even, even The Fury of Dracula, which is a little bit longer and a little more complicated than this one, I think. But overall, a solid game. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, check it out down below. It'll be on Kickstarter where you can go ahead and pick up a copy for yourself. Or if not, let me know why not in the comments below. Outro time. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Mind and Management Psychic Espionage Game. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It greatly does help us, and we do really appreciate it. And you can also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We have blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more that we try and produce all the time so you can see the latest Kickstarter games out there, as well as unique giveaways like the one from Simon, which is currently on our site. As well as check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek we have before you play we have show me how to win the cardboard stacker these are all great friends of mine in the area that i want you to support too if you would like to and see what they're doing they do a lot of great stuff sometimes even more than my own all right guys thank you so much for watching and as always i look forward to psychically infiltrating your mind and making you join the mind management corporation with you next time